Chill on back with part three. Let's continue here. All right. Edom is still here. All right. Now, when the Lord comes back, as you read in uh, Matthews uh, 24, 31, and he shall send his angels at the sound of the trumpet to gather who? His elect from the four winds, north, south, east, west, from one end of heaven unto the other. Besides that, he's coming what? To destroy Esau, Edom, and his Edomite beast system, to take out his armies, his militaries, right? But first, the Lord is going to use the other nations, you know, Gog and Magog, also known as the Medes, Russia, all right? And all nations that have ICBM capability, all right? China, Iran, you know, whoever has ICBM capability, you're going to have them all, including America's own allies, NATO and the EU, send missiles onto America. Now, you know, the Lord is going to do that by putting his will, all right, on them, all right? He controls the hearts and minds of the kings of the earth, all right? And we read that in Escalatius 18 and 3. Let me quickly show you that right here, all right? Who governeth the world with the palm of his hand, and all things obey his will, for he is the king of all, by his power dividing holy things among them from the profane, profane meaning ungodly. But as you can see, who governeth the world with the palm of his hand, and all things, I repeat, all things obey his will. Do you understand, people? You see that? All things obey his will. There you go. All right? So anyway, like I said, I was also going to take you here. This is 1 Corinthians 15 or 24. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of the Most High. This is talking about Yahweh Shai. See, even the Father, Yahweh, when he shall have put down all rule and authority and power. Who's going to put that down? Yahweh Shai. Along with Michael, the archangel, and all the thousands upon thousands of angels. Okay? That the Lord is coming back with. For he must reign till he have put all enemies under his feet. And the hit list starts with Esau, Edom. Go to Psalms 83. You'll see that there at the top of the hit list, the tabernacles of Edom. All right? And verse 26, And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. That's Esau. Do you understand? Esau, Edom. Okay? You go to Habakkuk 2 and 5. It's describing him there. And that he is as death. Okay? He is the man of sin, the son of perdition, which means destruction. That's what he represents, death and destruction. So anyone joined on to him, like I said earlier, as we read in Isaiah 13, 15, those that are joined on to him shall also be thrust through with the sword. Okay? For any of you jakes out there. All right? You have to choose a side. Okay, you choose Esau over the Lord, well, good riddance, <laughs> all right, you're going to die Esau's death, all right, anyway, let me, uh, let's go to the prophecy, give me a minute, all right, the key point is in 2nd Ezra 6 and 9, I'll start at 7, all right, then answered I and said, what shall be the parting us under of the times? This is Ezra speaking to the angel. Or when shall the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, the angel said unto Ezra, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. You understand? Pulling them, that's symbolism, that's an allegory, okay? It's prophecy, okay? Pulling them down out of power, all right? And the rest would follow, right? Esau sold his birthright, all right, onto Jacob, you understand? Okay, and these things happen because this is what the Lord wanted to happen. And that's pretty much explained when you read Romans the ninth chapter. Starting around, what is that? The 11th verse there. And read on down to the 23rd verse. All right? 
Esau was created to be the antagonist, to play the part of the bad guy, the devil and Satan here on the earth. You understand? That's what he was created for. He is about death and destruction. He's that violent and evil man you read in Psalms 140. You understand? All right? It's no getting away from that. All right? It's not talking about Japheth. You can't link Japheth even onto that. Okay? So you people need to get the heck out of here with all that nonsense. All right? Verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world. Okay, see that word world there is 165 in the Bible concordance or in the blue letter. Okay, it's talking about the ending of an age, Esau's age. And you're witnessing it. Okay, you're bearing witness to it of him being taken out of power. All right? And Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. And Esau, he doesn't ever want you to know that. He thinks, you know, with him, the end all be all is supposed to be with him. Like nobody else is going to rule. We've already read how the Lord set him up kingdoms and taken down kingdoms. Okay? So please, people, there it is. It's right there in your face. Okay? The Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans are set up to rule, and we're talking about the everlasting kingdom. You know, Daniel. All right, Daniel 2, 44, okay? Nobody else is ever going to rule again, all right? Nobody else is ever going to rule again, all right? Go read it for yourselves, all right? Uh, let's see here. See, for evil shall be put out. This is what's taking place, okay? That's why the Lord set us up with our elders on down. For evil shall be put out, and the seed shall be quenched. As for faith, it shall flourish, and corruption shall be overcome, and the truth which hath been so long without fruit, right? The truth has been hidden, right? For so long, right? And we also read what? Right, in Colossians, right? In Colossians 1.26, what does it say here? Uh, jump to it. Colossians 1.26, right? What does it say here? See, even the mystery which have been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to who? Yeah, his saints. Okay? It's made to his saints, right? Go to Luke. What is that? About 168. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he have visited and redeemed his people. See, and that starts with the elect. And have raised up a horn of salvation for us, right? In the house of his servant David. Okay? Who is Peter? For all you people, you know, that's for those of us that obviously understand the scriptures have the spiritual lie, okay? And as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, you see, again, his secrets are revealed unto his servants, the prophets, Amos, B, and seven, right? Which have been since the world began. You see that? You understand, people? All right? Which clearly proves all these you know, man-made religious ideologies are all falsehoods. Those things were created to keep all the people in darkness, okay? To keep them from coming into the truth. To control their minds, pervert and corrupt their minds with lies. Okay? Why? Because they're the children of Satan. Okay? And this is the anti-Messiah system. Alright? America's not founded on Christian principles. Even though that's the label they've always put out. America's founded on genocide, murder, slavery, stealing of lands. All right? The slavery of the Israelites, the genocide of the Israelites, the captivity of the Israelites, the stealing of Israelite land, wealth, resources. Ain't nobody can come and look me in the face or any brother in this truth and, you know, think that they're going to come up and make 
you know, these false lies, deceptions, and claims that, you know, this is a Christian nation, because it's not. It's an anti-Messiah system, and that's the way it was set up to be, all right? America is an evil, a necessary evil, all right, in fulfillment of prophecy in order to bring in the kingdom, okay? All right? Anyway, um, let me take you to something else. Give me a minute. All right, this is Exodus 17 and 16. And you guys can actually start up at the 8th verse and read on down. For time's sake, I'm not going to do that. All right. So he said, because the Lord, Yahweh, we say that because we see the word Lord in all caps. All right. The Lord have sworn that the Lord, Yahweh, will have war, right, with Amalek, the Amalekites, right, the Edomite, the head tribe being the international banking families, okay, the Illuminati, Luciferians, whatever you want to call them, they have many names, they're Satanists, okay, Rothschilds, Oppenheimers, Rockefellers, etc., etc. et cetera, all right, with the Edomites from generation to generation. So how could possibly, how could it be that the Edomites were done away with? Are you people calling the Lord a liar? Because I can take you to Numbers 23, 19, and it says that the Lord uh, and his son are not men, that they should lie. That's what it will tell you there. Okay? You understand that, people? All right? Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, and Amalek? That's Edomite. You go to, uh, what is that, Genesis 36? All right? These are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. See? You go down to verse 12. And Tima was a concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son. And she bare Eliphaz Amalek. See? These were the sons of Ada, Esau's wife. There you go. All right? There you go, people. All right? And it gives you the generation. You can read the whole thing for yourself on your own time. All right? All right, uh, you know what? We'll uh, we'll end this here. Uh, we'll be right back uh, with part four. All right, there's something else I want to show you and take you to. All right, so we'll be right back. Shalom. <laughs>